What's up everyone? Welcome back. Um, we're gonna start 1-3 day 2. Got a new camera, got a new microphone, so hopefully um, the sound's a little bit better uh, and uh, we can continue forward from here. Let's get started with our Frankenstein functions continued here. Before we begin, today's functions are just gonna be a little more complicated than the ones before, um, but really nothing too, um, nothing too crazy. So uh, before I get started, I want to do, we haven't really graphed many of these officially. Um, I want to do, what does the function y equals x squared look like? So this is called the, uh, the parent function of a quadratic, or a parabola is the shape that it creates. So um, let's run through and kind of draw this parent function because your assignment is going to ask you to graph a couple of these, and this will be a good warm up. So the parent function looks like, um, we're graphing here y equals x squared. The parent function x equals 0, um, the y value is going to be 0 squared. So basically all you do to graph this is you go to the x value and the y value is that value squared. So 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, and I could you know write these out like so. 2 squared is 4. You guys get the gist. This process is going to continue. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared goes up to 9, so on and so forth. Now one key feature of parabolas is that they have this thing called the axis of symmetry. Okay? Parabolas have an axis around which they are symmetric. Okay? They also have this thing, this point of turnaround here, which is sometimes it's a maximum, sometimes it's a minimum. Um, we call this the vertex. Now, these points, parabola is always symmetric about its axis of symmetry. So you can take these points and reflect them over that axis, like so. Now, mathematically, what's happening there is you're just taking these numbers, negative 1, and you're squaring them. And the reason it's symmetric is because a negative times a negative still results in a positive. So you'll have negative 2 squared will give you 4, so on and so forth. And 3 squared is 9, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. So we get this kind of cool looking uh, curve here. Let's go ahead and... It's not a V. It actually kind of flattens out. Oh, that was ugly. Try that again. Okay, we got director's commentary in the back. Some people pay pay extra for that on the DVD. Nobody watches Blu-rays. I miss director's commentary. Anyways, um, a commentary by Oscar today. That's our parent function of our parabola. And the key numbers you need to hear remember here are those first three perfect squares. If you remember that you know three squared is nine, two squared is four, one four nine. The first three perfect squares are the ones you typically need to graph on uh, on any given quadratic that you're going to see in this class. Okay, so remember that. Um, we're going to start with a little word problem to kind of get our, our brains warmed up. And make sure we remember that what we're learning is relevant and has a purpose. There are functions that are piecewise that behave differently um, over different sections. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so let's think about what this means. So you get a job at a, as a lifeguard, you make $10 per hour for each hour you work up to 40 hours a week. So what we're gonna be modeling, we're gonna make a little graph here. So sketch a graph and write a function that describes your basic earnings, right? Um, and then if you work more than 40 hours, you get paid time and a half, which means you get your wage plus an additional 50% of your wage. So we're gonna graph this. On the vertical axis we have our um, this is the amount of our weekly paycheck. So I'm gonna put this in dollars. This is kind of our paycheck for the week. Normally you get paid every two weeks, but whatever. This is our paycheck for the week, and over here is time, T, and this is in hours that you're working. And so what does this look like? What does this look like? What does our pay look like? So if this is T here, um, we'll call this Y. Uh, just a sec, I'm being beckoned. Do you want some more All right. My, oh, my, my. 
All right, we're back. We're back. Sorry about that. I uh, had to go take care of something, but we're good. Back, back to it. All right, so here we go. We have our. Um, let's think about what's happening here. So we have uh, y is our paycheck amount, right? We're pretending t is x. I could have just called it x, whatever. All right, so if you work zero hours, you get paid zero dollars, right? If you work one hour, you get paid ten dollars because you're getting paid ten dollars an hour. If you work two hours, you get twenty, so on, so forth, up to forty. If you work forty hours, that still falls under your original wage, so you get paid four hundred dollars, ten times the number, four hundred dollars during that week for that week of work. However. However, if you work for 41 hours, if you work for 41 hours, you're getting paid time and a half, so you're getting paid $15 an hour for the additional hour you worked only. So only for that addition, additional hour. So this looks like 400 um, plus 15 times one. If you work for 42 hours, you get paid $400 for your first 40 hours, just like you did for 40, plus $15 times two hours, because you've worked two hours over 40. So what does this look like? Well, you're getting paid $10 an hour. Do you get paid for half hours? Oh yeah. So it's kind of climbing up at $10 an hour until you get to 40 hours and $400. That's this point right here. Now, after that point, you're now getting paid $15 an hour. So you still have $400. It's just the line. That's not a great example. The line is getting a little bit steeper. So we kind of see this chunk here where it starts to get a little bit steeper. Okay, so let's write our function. Our function f of x, or f of t rather in this case, is. Um, it has two zones. It kind of has the zone where we're getting paid our regular time and then the zone when we're getting paid time and a half. So let's do that. Um, okay, so from here to here, you're getting paid 10 times T, which is the number of hours of work. So when is that? That is when, um, or if or when, T is less than or equal to 40, but greater than or equal to zero. So we want it to be, you can't work negative hours. So you have to limit t to bigger than zero, um, but less than 40. Now, what does it look like if after that point? Well, this gets a little bit challenging. So if t is bigger than 40, how much are we getting paid? Well, for every hour we work, we're getting paid $15, time and a half, right? Or you could say, you know, 1.5 times 10. So, so what does the function look like? Well, it's going to look like 400 plus, because we've, we've already, we're getting paid 400 regardless for that first 40 hours, right? So it's 400 plus, um, and then $15 for every hour you work. Now, I can't put 15T here. Because if you plug in 41, then you're gonna do 15 times 41, and you're gonna you already we already counted the first 40 hours. So we're we actually have to kind of take away the first 40 hours from our time. Because when it's 42, we put two here. When it's 41, we put one. When it's 43, we put three. So we put t minus 40. Okay, that that is gonna correct, right? If I put 43, you know put to know to put three here. You're correcting that for 40 there. So here we have our function. This is our piecewise function um, in all of its glory. Okay, let's practice graphing some of these. So the first thing you do when you're graphing a piece, five, so we're going to graph and we're going to find um, domain and range for these as well. Okay, so let's take a look at this first one. So we have a boundary for our piecewise function. So you always start by graphing the boundary, which is a vertical line at negative two. So we're going to come down here like so, all right? Um, and then we're gonna talk about each function individually. So here we have our boundary right here in the middle um, at negative two, and we need to graph, start at the top, which is typically going to be the, the function furthest to the left, 
um, we need to graph the function y equals x plus 3, sorry, y equals x plus 3. That has slope 1 and y-intercept of 3. Slope 1, y-intercept of 3. So if I go up to 3, it's got a slope of, so I'm just going to put the dots for this. Okay, I'm just putting kind of reference points for my function. This is what it looks like. But I'm not interested in all of those points. I'm only interested in the ones that are less than negative 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look here. It says that uh, we have, it's on the boundary is an open circle. So we have an open circle on the boundary. And we're only shading or only graphing the part of the function that is less than negative 2. Great. OK, let's switch colors. The next one will be in green. I'm feeling green here. x minus 3. OK, how do we do x minus 3? Well, x minus 3 uh, is the same function. So we go down to, it's the same slope, rather. So our green one is y equals x minus 3. m equals 1. This time, b is equal to negative 3. Negative 1, 2, 3. Okay, and then coming down here, um, we it is all the values that are greater than negative 2. So we're graphing from negative 2 with an open circle. It's open because there's no equals. Going all the way up this way. Okay, cool. Okay, and then it says let's find the domain and range. Domain and range is every possible x value. So the domain here. The lowest x value, this continues going, so it's going to be negative infinity. All the way up to, now this is where it gets a little tricky. Are there any holes or any spots where there isn't an x value? And the answer is yes. On this boundary, negative 2 is not included. So we put negative 2, and then we got to go from negative 2 up to infinity for the green line. So this one represents the green line, this one represents the purple line, but they don't overlap because neither of these are filled in. Negative 2 is not in our domain, as represented here. Okay, in the range, in the range, are there any y values left out? What's the lowest y value? Well, this continues down forever. So the lowest y value is um, negative infinity. And then we're going all the way up, and this continues all the way up forever. Now, this hole right here is included by this point. This hole is included by 1 over here. So that goes all the way to infinity. We're done. Okay, boundary here. What's the boundary? It's 1. We put our dashed line. Okay, there's our boundary. Now I'm going to come through, let's do blue this time, maybe blue and red. Blue is x squared. Okay, so x squared we just graphed. That's the parent function. So we're graphing y equals x squared, or it's the parent function of a quadratic, which is the thing we did before, this thing right here, right? Remember those three numbers, 1, 4, 9. Okay, when you go one away from the vertex, so zero squared is zero, right? When you go one away from the vertex, you go up one. Two away, you go up four, right? Because two squared is four. And then you can reflect that over this way. Three squared is nine. So what does our parabola look like? We're only interested in the dots that are less than one. So you actually don't even need to graph these two. So we can kind of get this shape coming down here. Whoops, I'm going to straighten that out a little bit. Grammy and Pop, you guys want to be in the YouTube video? No. Okay, didn't think so. Just thought I'd check. Yeah. Oscar, you want to be in the YouTube video? All right. That's all right. Rhetorical question. All right, 2x minus 1 is the next one y equals 2x minus 1. What's the slope? Our slope is 2. Our y-intercept is, is a line, right? we got to recognize this is a quadratic because the power is 2. This is a line because the power of x is 1. <clears throat> so now we're going to graph this. So we're going to go down to negative 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, so on and so forth. 
Okay. Now, what are the points we're interested in? That's a closed circle there. Closed circle because of the equal sign. Adding to the height. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at domain and range. Domain, every acceptable x value. This is going to continue. Is there a number we can't square? No, there isn't. So we're going to go from negative infinity up to infinity. The range, is there a lowest possible y value? Yes, there is. This comes down and turns around at 0. So 0 is the lowest and is included because there is a point with the y value 0. And then that goes all the way up to infinity. OK, let's crank up the heat a little bit. This one's a little more challenging. Um, let's do our boundaries first. So there's lots of boundaries. What I would uh, what I would recommend is that you kind of look at each function kind of one at a time um, and go from there. So the first function is from negative 7 to negative 2. So negative 7, our boundary is right here. Negative 2. right there. So put our boundaries in so we kind of know where things are headed. Now let's come through and we'll start graphing. This is 2x plus 4. 2x plus 4. y equals 2x plus 4. It's got a slope of 2, y-intercept of 4, down to 1. Oh boy, this one's going to go off the graph a little bit. That's OK down to down to over 1 down to over 1 all right so let's take a look um, at negative 7 it's a closed circle and at negative 2 it's an open circle and we're going to connect everything in between Fantastic. All right, let's get our boundary pen out. Um, so we've, we're done with this purple one. We've done the boundary. It's open circle on negative 2. This one is between negative 2 and 2, so I'm going to come through with my I'm going to come through with my boundary pen. Uh, this one is x squared minus 7. What is this? Well, let's go back. Remember when we learned those things about parent functions? This is the parent function, right? When I did, think about when I did the absolute value of x minus 6. Well, that's the absolute value of x function shifted down 6. If you have, right, if you have something like, uh, for this one, like uh, if you want to graph y equals x squared plus 2, you just take all these points and move them up. 2, right? This one goes up 2, 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 and then you can connect it up. It's like that's all you have to do. Um, so for here, this is the parent function x squared. Remember those numbers? 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. You're going to take that shape and you're going to shift it down 7. putting these tiny little dots here as reference. Now we're going to look at the boundaries. Both of them turn out to be closed circles. So we're good. And then now we can come up like so. So there's our parabola for our function. Let's do the last one. Let's get our boundary pen between 2 and This is negative 4 minus x. Negative 4 minus x is, whoops, can also be written as negative x plus 4. Oh man, it's doing the eraser thing. Brutal. Okay. Um, oh, then I gotta fix that. It's gonna drive me crazy. 
All right, we're good to go. Um, all right, negative x, so this has a slope, a slope of negative one and a y-intercept of, oops, that's minus four, pardon me, um, minus four. So I'm gonna go down to here, down to negative four, um, and then it's got a slope of negative one, so that comes down like this, like this, like this. I'm only interested between two and three, and that's excluding two, including three. Coming between there. And we're done. Okay, it does ask us to find, state the domain and range, um, as well as incre intervals of increasing and decreasing. So the domain, lowest value is right here, looking in the x direction. So squish it against the x-axis, what would it look like? That is from including negative seven. Are there any gaps? That one's filled in there, swoop down. No gaps all the way up to three, which is also included because that's a closed circle. Our range, lowest possible y value. Well, right here we are at negative six. We go down two over one, we're at negative eight. Down two over one, we're at negative 10. So the lowest possible y value is negative 10. And as we continue up, the highest possible y value is zero, which is not included. Okay, increasing, decreasing, constant. Where is this increasing? Isn't it? If I was riding a bike from left to right, where are we going uphill? We're going uphill right here. We're increasing from only the x values is what I'm interested in. Only interested in the x values. Don't tell me the heights. Okay, tell me the x values where I'm increasing. The x values where my increasing are from negative seven. You can just use parentheses here over to negative two, okay? Now, at negative two, we begin this decrease, but then we start turning around again and increasing again from zero to two. So, we're going uphill. I'm looking at the x values only. So we're increasing there, increasing right here. Decreasing, where are we going downhill? Well, I already said this section right here, that's from negative two to zero, we're going downhill. And we're also going downhill from union two to three. Constant, there's nothing with a uh, slope zero or a horizontal line, so this is not applicable. Okay, let's do this quickly. Here we go. Um, let's do one at a time, one at a time. So the first one, starting off, boundaries, negative five. Negative five. Let's do between negative five. I'm gonna, for this one, I'm gonna go a little faster. I'm gonna do it like maybe how I would do it while I was doing an assignment. I'm gonna go through and put all my boundaries. Negative five. Negative one. Three. come through. You guys are getting story time in the background too. Lucky you. Okay, five. It is it is the function five from from negative five to one, excluding negative five, including negative one. So it is open circle here, close circle here, connect the dots. Next one red, negative x, y equals negative x, has slope, negative one, the coefficient of x, and y intercept of zero. So we come here, it's got slope, negative one, excluding negative one, um, including three. Let me connect the dots. And lastly, and let's do green this time, five minus x, y equals negative x plus five, 
is m equals negative 1, p equals 5. So I go up to 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I've got a slope of negative 1. Okay, open circle here, open circle there. Alright, cool. It's looking good. I'm gonna I'm gonna double check something. I think I might have a mistake. Hold on, let me go back. Uh, I I was actually good. I think I'm good here. Alright, so open circle, open circle, close circle, yeah, I think we're good. Alright, let's do domain, range, increasing, decreasing. Alright, domain, lowest x value possible is right here. That would that is negative five. You can kind of do it from from the function as well, right? From negative five. Travel along, is there any x values missing? Nope, we jump down to here, jump up to here. The highest value is six, which resonates with what we've got going on here. All right, now the range is a little weird. The range is a little weird. Um, to do the range, find the lowest y value, which is um, negative two, uh, wait, but including negative two. Let me fix that. Negative two, but including negative two, up to, now we have to actually stop at three here. We have to stop at three because, um, because there's this gap. There, are, There's a whole bunch of y of spots here, points that don't have y values, or y values that aren't included until we get up to this singular y value of five. So that's um, parenthesis there, and then you can put the union, and since this is a single value, it doesn't really make sense to write it as an interval, so I would just write it as the set containing five, so use the squiggly brackets. Just one single number, just like if you were to have a set of things, that's just fine. Okay. There's our um, domain range. Let's do increasing, decreasing, constant. Or is it increasing? Or is it going uphill? As we go from left to right, it's not. So we just say NA. Decreasing, it's decreasing from here to there. So that is from negative one up to six. And where is it constant? That is from Um, from negative 5 to negative 1. Yeah, perfect. Nice job. Alright, write a function that defines the functions for the graphs below. I'm going to basically, we're just doing this in reverse, right? So we'll start with black, I guess. f of x equals, we're going to put a big bracket. We're gonna first, we're gonna do this in order, purple, I'm gonna do this first section in purple. Okay, first section in purple. So when is it, at, or so what is this value? What is this function? It is this function, this is at the height of, these are going by two, two, four, six, that is the height of seven. So it is the value seven if x, now, Think about that in interval notation. It's from negative, these are going by twos, from negative five to negative two. So what does that look like? You can't use interval notation here typically. You don't wanna do that. So from negative five to negative two. Literally you just put these numbers down in here and then the bracket is represented by less than or equal to, less than or equal to. So it's seven if it's this inequality. So if it's between negative five and negative two, including those endpoints. All right, and uh, let's take a look. Okay, from here to here, I'm actually, since since that's a closed circle, I'm gonna put an open circle. You don't have to, you could do kind of whatever you wanted, it doesn't really matter. I know this is already red, but. Okay, so that's our second one. Um, remember that's going from, um, maybe we should just do the boundaries first really quickly. Do the boundaries first. So come all come all through. You can think about 
what are your boundaries? There's a boundary, there's a boundary, there's a boundary. Now look at this. These don't don't line up, so there are actually separate boundaries present. So we actually have quite a few boundaries here, which is fine. So the purple one we're done with. The red one is from negative two. So we can actually start that right now. It's from negative two. We're just gonna use an open circle. It doesn't really matter there because they're the same value, right? They're on the same point. If they didn't meet up, it would be a big deal. Um, is greater than X, which is less than or equal to three. All right, so how do we find the equation of this line? Well, it is a line, so it must follow you know, the formula y equals mx plus b. All right, so uh, if we want to do that, then we need to find the y-intercept and we need to find the slope. So the best way, the easiest thing to find is the y-intercept, usually. So find where it crosses. It's between 4 and 6, which we can assume it crosses at 5. Now the slope, let's count. Okay, it goes down how far, over how far. We know the slope is negative, right? Because it's it's slanting down this direction. So count the rise. It's going from seven, in between six and eight, seven down to two, that is a change of five, and it's going from negative two over to three, which is also a change of five. So my slope is negative five over five, which is negative one. So how do we write this? This is y equals negative x plus five. And in blue, we have an open circle here, a closed circle here, and we're connecting between them. Boom! All right, sweet. Um, let's do this. What's the boundaries? It is from if four is less than or equal to x. So if x is bigger than four, is what that says, and x is less than six what's the value of this function so this one's a little bit more challenging there's a couple ways that we can get okay. there's a couple ways that we can get the equation for this line okay first of all okay first of all we need to find the slope this is going from nine down to five which is a change of four um, and we're going from in the X direction we're going from four over to six which is a change of two so our slope, in this case, it is positive. 4 over 2, which is 2. It's positive. You can tell just by looking at it. You can tell it's an aspen because of the way it is. Um, yeah, let's see. And then um, what's our y-intercept? So down 4 over 2, down 1, 2, 3, 4 over 2, down 1, 2, 3, 4 over 2. So there's a couple ways you can get the y-intercept. You can sit here and go down 4 and over 2, down four and over two until you get to that point, right? And know that, oh, hey, it crosses at negative three. That's one way to do it. So our line is two X minus three, but I'm gonna be an overachiever here. And I'm gonna show you one other way to get the equation of this line. So feel free to not write this down, but you can use the skills that, you know, we've already learned. Those being, we know it travels through the point six comma nine. We also know it travels through the point Four comma five. So if we know the two points, we should be able to write the equation of the line. We can find the slope using the slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is four over two, which gives us the slope two. If we wanna write the equation line, throw it into point slope form. That's y minus y1 equals, pick a point, doesn't matter which point you pick, m times x minus x1, which is four, distribute the two, y minus 5 equals 2x minus 8. Add 5 to both sides and look what we get. y equals 2x minus 3. Same thing we got here. Either way works. Um, and you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get that that same function no matter what you do. Okay, you guys try this next one on your own. Unpause the video when you're ready to uh, go. Wait, did it ask us for, no, it doesn't ask us for domain and range. Okay, cool. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna pause the video, you guys try on your own, and then I'm gonna do it real fast. Right, here we go, game time. Found 
boundary, 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 pen, black, black, like my heart. Okay, coming through, curvy bracket, purple. We'll do this one in purple. Close circle, open circle. All right? That is if x is less than negative 2 and greater uh, if x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Okay, perfect. So between negative 3 and negative 2. All right, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to maybe re rehash these points that are looking kind of... Uh, sound effects today are brought to you by a three-year-old, so you're welcome. Down one over one. Okay, so where does it where if this were to continue this line, it's got a slope of negative one, right? Down one over over one. So rise over run is one over one, and it's a negative slope. So it's going to be negative x. Our y-intercept is zero, so we're done. It's negative x. If it's between here and here. Okay, and let's do green. Close circle, open circle, come on through. It is, uh, this is a constant value of 1. I almost thought the scale was different. Psyched me out. Constant value of 1 if... is less than... Did you just say Norm Macdonald died? Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. Bummer. That's a big major bummer. Okay. Minus, uh, or sorry, less than 1. If x is less than 1 and x is greater than or equal to negative 2, the show must go on. Ooh, that's real sad. Okay. Okay, uh, if x is less than or equal to 2, x is greater than or equal to 1. All right, what about this one? This one we're going, what's our slope? The rise is 4, the run is 1. So this has a slope of 4 over 1. So if I were to go continue this pattern, I go down 4 over 1, I've got a slope of Four x, so the slope is four. So we write four x minus five. All right, it's looking good. Um, okay, yeah, we got a couple more left. These aren't going to take long. So what is this? This is this is an absolute value function. It's nice. It's going to be nice to have a little bit of review here. We got an absolute value function. Uh, you guys know that the parent function for absolute values looks like y equals the absolute value of x. Right, parent function looks like this. It forms a v, v for va absolute value. All right. Now this has two transformations that it's been affected by. It's been reflected over the x-axis, which must happen first because if you plug in a value, you follow what would you do with order of operations, right? You'd make it negative, then you'd add three. Flip this over the x-axis, right? And then you're gonna flip this first. So the purple dots are y equals negative absolute value of x, then you're going to take those things and shift them up. So this one I'll do in red. You're going to take those things, you're going to shift them up three. Steve, have you heard his moth joke? No. Oh, we got to look that up. So here's our absolute value function. I'm getting too close to the, hold on, let me just get, oh, oh, I leaned in too far. Let me fix that. Apologies, apologies, apologies. Okay. So how do we write this function um, as a piecewise function? Well, it's made up of two lines, right? 
um, the two lines are the line on the left, so our boundary is zero. So if x is less than or equal to zero, it's one thing. And if it's x is greater than zero, it's another line, right? That's the boundary between these two. The, ba <laughs> the boundary between these two. Okay, so for the top one, um, or the one on the left, where it's x is less than zero, um, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna do whatever. I'll just continue in red. If x is less than zero, this line has. It's a line. It's got a slope of one. So we write x and it's got a y-intercept of 3. And then for the line on the right, also has a y-intercept of 3. So following that, y equals mx plus b, but it's got a slope of negative 1. So that's how you do this. You basically just draw the graph the absolute value, kind of cut it in the middle, write it as the equation of two different lines, changing the boundary, or rather, wherever the vertex of this is, where it turns around, that's going to be your boundary. All right, so for this one, before you try this on your own, I'm gonna kind of remind you that if you have one like this where the coefficient of x on the inside of the, on the, inside of the absolute value bars is uh, not equal to one, you first need to factor out um, and make that coefficient one. You're gonna factor out six in this case. Um, and so you can follow that rule uh, that says the absolute value of a product is equal to the product of its absolute values. Um, and we don't really need to go any further than that, other than to say we have a product. So I can find the product of um, each of those things on the inside. The absolute value of 6 is 6. So <clears throat> there you go, perfect. So. What is this? We have two transformations here. This one is a vertical stretch by a factor of 6. So times 6, right? Everything is getting stretched by a factor of 6. And this is a shift left 3. Which one happens first? Well, if I were to plug in a number of x for x, we'd add 3 first. So here's my parent function, right? Now I'm taking that and I'm shifting everything to the left three. Left three. That happens first. Okay, and then we're taking all of those heights and we're multiplying them by a factor of six. So zero is zero, zero times six is zero. This is one away, right? This is one away from the x-axis. So we're going to stretch that 6 times that amount, which goes up to 6. And it turns out that will also go up that way. So this is our, this is all we see. We really only have a couple points. Like that. And like that. OK, now we have to write this as a piecewise function. So we will say f of x equals, um, as a piecewise function, Remember, the boundary line is that vertex where it turns around. Oops. That's our boundary line. So it's a matter of finding out what that value is. It's negative 3. So if x is less than or equal to negative 3, I'm always just putting the equal on the top one. It doesn't really matter. Um, you can put it on the bottom one if you want, or probably put it on both. It's probably not going to break any rules. Okay, x is less than or equal to negative 3, um, because they're at the same point, right? This point is included on both. If it's not included, then it makes a difference. Okay, what is what is the value of our function? Well, my rise here, I'm going down 6 over 1, which gives me a slope, since it's a negative slope. That's a slope of negative 6, right? Slope of negative 6. What's my y-intercept? Well. I'm three away from the y-axis, and I go down six every time I go over one. So I'm going to go down six over one, put me at negative six. Down six over one, put me at negative 12. Down six over one, put me at negative 18. And if x is greater than negative three, I have a positive slope of six. Okay, And this is going to go over one, up six, over one again, up six, which puts us at 12, over one again, up six, which puts us at plus. 
there's our function. All right, the last two questions here are just, can you look at a piecewise function and, and figure out the domain um, without seeing it? And you should be able to because you, you're just taking these inequalities and kind of figuring out what's included and what isn't. And you know what these inequalities are represented by an in interval notation anyway. So we actually have kind of two different functions, two different segments we're looking at. The domain here is um, from the lower value, which is negative 1, up to negative 2. But 2 is included and negative 1 is not. The next interval is this next one for our domain. So it's from 5 up to 10. 5 is included, 10 is not. Try this one on your own and really give it a try. Um, it's a little weird. I'm going to go over here in a sec. But uh, here we go. The domain. <clears throat> we have two sections. So we are actually going to have two intervals, but you have to be careful because less than 2 is from negative infinity to 2, right? We do have a union, and the next one is from 2 to infinity. So this is correct, but if I had done this, if I had added the equal sign, the domain, there'd be nothing left out. So you wouldn't write it as two different intervals. You wouldn't put like a bracket on this one and this one not included because it's all real numbers, right? So you just got to be, you just got to be careful with, um, with that. All right. Hope you enjoyed the video. Your assignment will be posted on the Mathnasium soon. And uh, thanks for watching.